I burst into the classroom and pointed my shotgun at the crazed Ryan. What the heck? Ryan hissed. You left me for dead out there. Didn't even come and try to help. Well, what did you expect? We told you not to go out. And still, you didn't come to help and now you'll lose a friend. Blame suddenly appeared behind Ryan and pressed his pistol to the back of Ryan's head. Try me. I'll shoot your head off. Ryan let out a maniacal laugh. You idiots try anything stupid and I'll cut your throat. I pump the shotgun, loading it. As soon as either of us shoots you, you'll be gone before you try anything. Bullets are quicker than knives. You want to try me? Ryan screamed, pulling arm in tighter in the headlock. I took one step forward with my shotgun. Why not? Now let go of Armin, now, or... Ryan lifted his knife to stab Armin, but with an unexpected turn of events. He had silently managed to get a hold of his knife that was sheathed in his pocket, and he pulled it out and he jabbed Ryan in the side. Ryan screamed out in pain, letting Armin go as he gripped the wound, but slowly he got back up. Before he lunged at us, Ryan growled, That was a mistake, you... But just as Ryan lifted his arm to stab the closest person to him, being me, I heard a loud gunshot go off and Ryan slumped to the ground with a new hole in his arm. Behind him stood Blame, blowing the smoke of his pistol. Ryan screamed out in pain, holding the wound down with his hand, and then he passed out. Watch your decisions, dog. I stared at Ryan screaming on the floor. You wanna go bury him or something? Armin shook his head. Nah, he's still alive. The drones will probably come to get him soon anyways. Screw you, Ryan. Ryan psychopathically screamed out in response, waking up. Nah, let's get back to the office, I said. When we made it back, Marlo was waiting inside with his rifle. What happened out there? I heard gunshots, he asked. We, we just ran into a little trouble out there, but we took care of it, I answered. Marlo nodded. I think that's enough of keeping watch for tonight. Why don't you all get some rest inside? I'll take over from here. Yeah, that'd be great, I tiredly said. I woke up to panicked whispers, and the sight of lights flickering right outside of the barricaded office. I got up and then realized that the lights weren't flickering. Something was covering them, covering them with a thick black liquid. And then I realized that three, no five drones were crawling on the ceiling, vomiting black goo onto the lights and turning the whole place dark. Before we realized what was happening, the drones had covered almost all the lights in the vicinity, bathing us in the pitch black. In the silence and shuffling of 30-something kids in the classroom, someone suddenly grabbed my shoulder and spun me around. What the? Yo, relax, dog. It's me, Flame said. The heck is going on? Marlo walked out of his private office with a large lantern and turned it on, illuminating a small part of the office. All right, I need silence, everyone, he said. The Algoma extermination team and I. Maybe a little context would be helpful. The name of our high school was Algoma High, even though we don't live anywhere near Ontario. And so, when we were a little bit bored, we thought a good name for our little group who were exterminating drones and doing general jobs would be the Algoma extermination team. Marlo continued on. We'll go investigate outside. Charlie, you watch the students and make sure that none of them do any dumb stuff. Let's move out and kick some butt. I got up and grabbed my shotgun and I checked the ammo. Satisfied with what I saw, I hauled butt to Marlo's private office, where Blame and Armin were waiting to catch up. Listen up, Marlo said. We go out, clear the whole place and kill every one of those monsters out there, and then we come back. We loaded up, armed to the teeth with guns, headlamps, emergency flashlights, knives, and a few Molotov cocktails. 
I turned the safety off my shotgun and I walked outside with Marlo, Blame and Armin following along. Come out, come out, Marlo said. Malia walked about ten meters away from the office. My headlamp illuminated a smaller drone crawling along the corners in the ceiling. All four of us unloaded all that we had on the monster, and soon it was nothing but a couple of separate chunks of flesh on the walls. When my ears had stopped ringing, I tried to kill the panic in my mind and I continued on. But from behind, an enormous tentacle wrapped around me, and an enormous warrior angler lifted me up into the air, and just above its mouth as I stared down deep into its gullet. Do something, dog, Blame screamed, and I did. I jammed the barrel of my shotgun down the monster's throat, and I pulled the trigger, reloaded, and then pulled the trigger. I guess the monster's insides exploded or something because it slowly went limp and dropped me, guts and black blood spewing out of its mouth. Ew, gross, I said. You okay? Marlo asked. Yeah, let's just keep going. We turned to left and that was when something very dangerous happened. I spotted a very fast movement from all around us, and I saw at least three drones surrounding me, moving too fast to get caught in our lights. Marlo, I whispered, we're surrounded. Yeah, I can see that kid. Now, come on, get ready to fight. It's gonna get messy. Blame suddenly got pulled back from our group formation, and a drone screeched and opened its enormous mouth, and prepared to bite a chunk of his shoulder off. I turned and fired my shotgun, just inches away from Blame's face, and by pure luck, the spray of metal pellets all hit the drone and blew its skull open. And then I felt a single drop of saliva fall on my chin. Blame. Yeah, dog. Are you ready to look up despite the inevitable jump scare? Whatever, player. I looked up and stared down the jaws of a drone hanging from the ceiling like a bat, using its tentacles and tendrils to grip the edges of the ceiling frame. I reloaded my shotgun and sidestepped the monster's jaws. Ah, oh, screw me. I let out a shot at the drone, but I horribly missed and I fell over on my butt as the monster slowly crawled down and prepared to eat my brains out. Marlo, you're the principal here. I need a little bit of help. Stabbing a smaller drone only about six feet tall, multiple times with a bowie knife, Marlo called out. Yeah, I know. I'm a little busy here. The drone stood up on the floor and it growled. I reloaded my shotgun. Eat lead, you piece of crap. I was about to fire the shotgun and blow the monster's brains out when it all of a sudden went limp. And Blame, driving a knife down directly into the monster's skull, said, Oh dog, you talk too much. Most of the things that had been a threat either had their brains ripped from their bodies or they had retreated back into hiding. Is that all of them? I asked. Yeah, probably. It seems like it, Marlo said. There's still a bunch of bodies on the floor, though. Marlo shrugged. Eh, leave them. If these things have any intelligence or brains, then they'll know not to mess around with Algoma High if there's a bunch of bodies laying around. The four members that consisted of the Algoma extermination team checked for any serious wounds, and then we all headed back to the office. What the heck happened out there? Charlie walked up to the doors. Uh, you're always so concerned, aren't you? But yeah, we kicked butt out there. I proudly yelled. Yeah, yeah we did. Okay. Charlie said. We cleaned up, scraped the gunk off the lights and did one last perimeter check, and we got back to a very uncomfortable sleep.